it's forecast for heavy rain and all day but it's our first trip out for the 2021 red raw and look at the conditions fog 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 and rain exactly 12 meters four spikers sam held his hands pretty well actually <laughs> and sam's filmed them before a few weeks ago it's amazing to see they're still together and we're in the it's the start of the role pretty much so it's gonna be happening so it just goes to show if the wind is in your direction they can come to within 10 meters not know nothing experience. It was amazing, honestly.
can't stop roaring all morning. The issue is we have the worst wind ever. There's about seven stags going off throughout the whole gully. And I've got females everywhere. The first lot of females already seen us and ran off. The wind is shocking. And without wind, you can't hunt these animals. So we're just gonna have to be patient until the wind changes and then sort of try and make our way in. Sam's looking at another paddock to the right. I don't know what's there, but yeah, it's all night they've been roaring there, none of them. of these females is a huge stag. Now he's in the thick stuff, just sitting there looking at his females. He's the dominant guy. We've had a look at him, but we haven't had a proper look at him. We don't know if we want to take him yet, so we want to make absolute certain that he's a, he's a takeable stag. So for the meantime, He's sitting in there looking, watching his females. And the big fella's just waiting. So let's hope he makes an appearance. So this is Jason's first day out with us for a long time actually. It's probably been a year, eh? It's my first ever hunt. <laughs> In a year actually. Last time he came out, he, he shot a stag. Sorry, I shot a stag. <laughs> but anyway, the whole point of this story is he comes here to eat. Don't, don't shoot a stag otherwise I won't come out with you for 12 months. <laughs>
Okay, so this is a scenario. We've come out pretty early in the Arvo and set up nice and high. A few reds started roaring and one stag crossed the paddock in front of us and moved over to this side. So we've come, we've come up the hill a bit, wrapped around and we're gonna try and see if we can, we can see him again. Um, there was another stag roaring over here, so we believe that they've met up. So hopefully there's some action over here. Stay tuned. So, I've just got into position. We've got Zahi behind me, in the tree over there. And I've got Sam over to my right. And with any luck, I'm hoping for a deer, one of these reds to come out. And there's real thick stuff behind me here. There's, there's three, three roaring. One over here, one there, and one further back. But I've got, a, I've got a shrub right next to me here that I'm hiding behind. And I can shoot in any direction, so. Everything should be within 20 meters. Man, what an afternoon. The wind is slightly starting to change. Hopefully for Jason's sake, it stays going up, but it slightly went left before and I was a bit worried. So I was telling Jason to try the puffer out. We're just doing a bit of a wind check because the wind's swirling a bit. Zahi is in the background and he's doing his puffer and I can see it's going this way. I do mine and it's going that way, so we're only what 20 meters apart, 30 meters apart. But the stags are going off. It's so surreal like being here. It's no matter how many times you hear it, it's as if it's like medieval times it just reminds you of like you know back in the days when the barbarians were around then you got beasts and the sound of a red roaring is just pretty epic i haven't been hunting in about 12 months and i haven't seriously been hunting for about three years now and being this close to reds roaring is another level i'm so nervous <laughs> On the target, my shots are on point. Let's just hope a good stag comes in.
emotionally setting. Only if, you can say only if a thousand times, end of the day, that's bow hunting. I had a lot of chances with a rifle to shoot him. But since Jason really, you know, wanted on with the bow for his first, it would have been him at least. Wow, that was exciting. We got pretty close. He was bashing a tree down there. And we stalked into the thick stuff. But he kind of wrapped around and got above us and snuck back up the hill. So we still got a bit of daylight, so we'll see how we go. Try and get back into a position. disturbances in the neighbor's property next door dirt bikes and it's nearly Easter so people have come early to their holiday destinations and we've sort of moved not far off that same ridge where the um, the stags were going off yesterday but a bit higher the winds very strong in our favor today which is really good Sam's up higher he's up there somewhere um, Jason's using the bow again I've got the rifle that's in case uh, Godzilla comes out or something. One of these massive <laughs> stags, like really massive. But the problem is the access we got here. Um, they're all wild, free range. And there are others that shoot around. and So you don't know what you're gonna get. But at the end of the day, Jason, 
He's put in the hard yards in by coming half day and we get the morning shift so <laughs> you know, we'll see how it goes, we just have to wait and see what pops up and I don't think they're going to be very vocal today compared to yesterday but yeah Jason's here and we're all ready to go so we'll see what happens. Well, that was friggin' awesome. We'd um, spent all day out today and haven't heard too much. Um, we tried a, another spot down the front of the property and um, funny thing is, was we, we were set up here earlier. <laughs> we decided to move because we heard a few roars down that way and then uh, we, we heard them back over this way and we got over here and it's the same fella from the other day, so. Well, man, we were pretty close again. <laughs> It's just that he had a female with him this time, so uh, he, he wasn't interested in any other roars, so he took off with his little harem. <laughs> One female and a last year's fawn, it looks like, yearling. So, oh well, probably that's going to be about it for this arvo. We don't have much light left, so we've got one or two more days to try and get this guy, see how we go. <laughs> This is the life, guys. Just been out here, enjoying the night, everything else. Just try to catch these guys out having their, having their food. Yum, yum, yum.
We are left. Nine hinds ran across the paddy. For some reason, was spooked and ran into the thick stuff. So that drove him crazy. He ran up and back down. And they sort of took off. So now he's concentrating on these two. He's a ten pointer, and he's missing both bait hinds. But he's the most mature thing we've seen this season. And being wild and free range. We don't know if you're going to see anything better. There he is. Okay, he's coming out. Silly season now where the stags for the first time come out and sit in the open guarding their hinds and but at the end of the day we've taken our first meat animal for the trip and we're gonna see what happens. Well I'm gonna see the stag that I just dropped. Um, it's funny because it's the last day and the last morning. <laughs> that usually people think yeah right they 
people just say that. But always on the last day, things happen. It's amazing. Don't get me wrong, we've got some great footage. We've seen some, you know, some pretty nice stags. But I wanted to leave it to the last day to take the one that I thought was worthy of taking anyway. And the farmer is begging me, please use your rifle, not the bow, for at least on the last day, because we all need meat. So still Jason's coming for the second half of the day and we're gonna see what happens there. But the, the farmer from day one's been telling me, make sure you take one before you leave. And we've been bow hunting for the last uh, three and a half days. So now it's finally good to, to take one. And luckily he popped up on the last day with three hinds and I think a fawn in the middle of the paddock here. Sam got some good footage of him. Um, to my left, nine hinds came charging in and they stopped sort of in the middle and ran into the thick stuff. That had this stag sort of worrying. He ran left and right and I was thinking, oh, he's probably gonna leave. Um, so I took him with the um, trusty seven mil rem mag. But yeah, now we've got a, a lot of work ahead of us. We've got to cut him up. I'm gonna keep the cape and the antlers and there's a lot of meat here. The farmer can feed himself, the dogs. We can feed our families all through this beautiful stag. It's like something you really appreciate when you take, I'll be honest. Like beautiful animal. You know, I film them most of the times. So I hardly take one. Probably one one a year I take, like you can say, with the rifle. And we see plenty of deer and you know sometimes you do have to take them out. The farmers tell you most of the majority of the time, look please shoot a few because they're starting to multiply in numbers and but in saying that, it's just beautiful being out in this beautiful mm. terrain and, you know, taking an animal, harvesting the meat and call it a trophy, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, just the memories stay at home and we've got it on video. And I always take the skins on my animals. Like, even though, like, we, you know, we're shooting it primarily for meat and I always keep the antlers, the skin, one day I might want to get it taxidermied or just as a memory really like but look at this the word fresh doesn't come any cleaner and better than this really so it's pretty cool the aim is not to leave any meat on the skin leave it white like this it makes the guy who's doing the tanning's job a lot more easier this stag had a lot of battle scars he's already missing a point so it's that time of the year so you're going to expect them to be like that spotted a couple of spikers out feeding it's really early afternoon we're just going to try and get the wind right get around to the side and hopefully they feed in towards us stay tuned Go 
down this track. As you can see, the track's really dry and crackly. Sam's gone up there to see if there's anything moving towards the right. And Jason and I are just sitting there waiting for the opportunity. There he goes. I just heard a little roar. We're just going to have to sit and wait. So our final afternoon hunting these reds for this week anyway and Sam and Jason had just walked down the track I sort of stayed there because we heard a stag roaring across a little gully and he had crossed the gully that quick and come up sort of on the side road to the road that we were on and I couldn't believe he just popped up in front of me Jason and Sam were stuck on the road Fourth day in a row we see this tag and we've got great footage of him but Lady Luck's on his side because if Jason was standing where I was he was a good 35 metres away. Well that's a wrap fellas. Come we're close. We're back next week. We're going to a couple of days off to do a couple of things. I'll tell you what, you better take some time off. <laughs> because if you're not going to get him, I am. No, he's, yeah, he's been, just, we've had many encounters with him. Close encounters too. Today was probably the the best opportunity. He'll, he'll be here, he'll be here the next time, so. I'm up first because I'm here first, but you yes. better, I'm telling you, you better take some time off. Because Still a couple of roars in the back. If I miss him, he's got the chance. Now it's on between me and him. That was a good four days. You know, we did have close encounters, like Jason said, and, you know, that's hunting. You don't always come up with a kill, but it was good this morning. We at least got one for me. 
soon. Till next time. So we've decided to sit out in an open paddock this afternoon only because we've seen a lot of activity down here. Sam's got that area covered behind me and I've got a massive area here. The whole paddock to the right and those double dams where I was just filming those. Beautiful carp, orange coloured carp and every afternoon we've had eating and feeding in this paddock so the wind is going everywhere but so we don't know what's going to happen just gonna have to sit it out and wait just before dark hopefully the deer come out from a direction where the wind's not going i can hear one roaring in the background but it's in the distance so we just have to wait it out As usual, the sun's just about to go down, about 20 minutes or so. We're on top of a large paddock surrounded by thick cover and it goes all the way down. Anyways, we've got a we've got a large stag from the sounds of him roaring down the bottom and he's making his way up to us. It's always about time. These guys come out just as the sun goes down. Yep, there is. Oh, he looks good, man. Oh my God. Oh my God. What are your thoughts? It's 220 meters away. Oh my god, the nerves are kicking in. This is how far we are.
what an absolute <laughs> freaky morning, eh? It's very foggy. I used to, I jumped out in front of Sam today, like 100 meters, and sent him messages telling him, come this way, come this way. So anyway, Sam got there quick, and I got him, take point, you know, go, go forward. So we heard this stag roaring from the house, and man, all of a sudden, we got into like a close position, and they started walking up towards us, and Sam goes, sit down, sit down, they're coming. So I was like stuck in the open, I couldn't, and the hind had walked up to me and barked. I thought it was over, the stag stood there. I had no clue Sam was going to take the shot. 40 metres, bang, quartering into the stomach, but that hit the heart, definitely. He only ran, I think, 40 metres and he's fallen there under a tree. I kind of just want to look at him. I don't even want to touch him. I've got all the time in the world. Let's just look at him for a long time. I told you I threw the stomach into the heart. Yeah, you see, when I looked at it, perfect shot. When the shot went off, I seen it hit the stomach, but you're right because of the quartering. Yeah. Is that why? Yeah, I knew automatic he's going to drop. I just said, give it time, and let him sit there and just yeah. drop. That's that's your that's an Oscar three blade, one twenty five grain. We are. Uh, I've been calling this guy Stinky because he's one of the smelliest stags I have smelt compared to every other one that we've seen this whole rut. But he's been the most active. He's been, he, he, he goes from one end of the property to the other. And you know what? You, know, you, said, you, said, you said this to me before. Just, just take your time, take your time, take your time. And this we've been after this guy for two weeks. Me and Jason, I think uh, four or five times we've encountered him. And I'm talking, I swear to God, I reckon probably 20 meters. Two, uh, three out of the four or five times. He's um, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five there. One, two, there's a little point here. Three, four, five, six. So he's an 11 pointer. That's the pretty much the genetics of his property. Uh, 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 you know, I, I've, I've only hit a goat before and I, I, I value this. I value this for one reason. Uh, we, we take the meat. We take the meat, we feed the farmer's dogs, the farmer takes some, my brother takes some, I take some. Um, stag, baby, female, whatever they are, we take the meat. For me, that's what it is. This is a good memory. And I don't, I don't, I'm not as, as, as ecstatic as my brother is probably, but <laughs> first, first, first deer, first deer ever taken. And it's, 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 it's a kind of a quality quality stag for for what this area is um, I can't believe it's that's for you Zihi thanks Broza that's a boat shot man <laughs> you got a good red for the boat <laughs> he's been practicing and he's shooting so well to target and yeah he held his composure really well this morning and everything came into line and yeah it was just beautiful to see him hit this stag and you know, drop only 30 metres away from where we hit him. And I couldn't be any prouder, man, to be honest. Like, yeah, and we come out today and look who's most vocal. <laughs> and we sort of just came in this direction and yeah, it happened. So, I'm, he's definitely putting this one on the wall, <laughs> shooting it with a bow at 40 metres, which is, wow, pretty good. <laughs> 